In this video, we'll take you through the process of getting your concrete washout system up and running. Before starting to assemble the concrete washout system, ensure there is a safe and approved 110 volt electricity supply close to the designated setup area. Move the filtration tray into position using a crane or forklift. If using a crane, attach a four-leg chain to the lifting points in each corner of the tray and check the load is balanced. Then carefully lower it into the washout area. If using a forklift, make sure the heel pins are secured behind the fork heels before maneuvering the tray around site. Once in position, fit the fork retaining pins in the storage position to prevent them being misplaced. Remove the lid from the end compartment in the filtration tray and place the submersible pump inside. Ensure there is a float attached to the pump for identifying the water level. Place the rails across the width of the tray, ensuring they are positioned wide enough to hold the filter bag open. Wrap the filter bag handles around the hooks on the rails to secure them in place. If you are washing out a concrete column skip, one filter bag will suffice. However, Conquip recommend using two filter bags for washing out a concrete truck chute to capture the maximum amount of aggregate in the bags. Attach certified lifting chains to the lower lifting eyes on the four legs of the skip washing platform. Crane lift to the washout area and lower the platform over the filtration tray. Ensure both legs of the platform are outside the tray and that they sit level on the ground. The platform can be configured to hold Conquip concrete column skips from 500 litre to 3000 litre capacities. First, identify the size of skip you have on site. You can do this by reviewing the ID plate on the side of the unit. The platform must be configured to suit the size of the skip. For 500, 750 and 1000 litre skips, you need to configure the platform with four resting pads and the restraint bar. The resting pads can be adjusted by removing the linch pins, lifting the pads off and rotating them 180 degrees, so either a smaller or larger length is overhanging into the skip holding area, depending on the size of skip. Once in place, refit the linch pins to secure the resting pads. Now set up the restraint bar to match the size of the skip. Remove the restraint bar from its storage position and lower it over the lugs, using the correct hole as per the skip size. Refit linch pins as required. For larger skips with sizes from 1500 to 3000 litres, the resting pads and the restraint bar are not required, as these skips are large enough to rest in the platform frame. If the restraint bar and the resting pads are not required, they can be stored on the end of the platform and secured with their linch pins. With the platform configured, the harness point upright can be moved into position. The central bolt should be loosened slightly, and the outer bolt removed completely. Swing the post upright and refit the outer bolt to fix the upright to the mid rail. Tighten both bolts. Attach the harness clip to the harness point at the top of the upright. Once attached to the harness point, you can remove the front handrail if required. This must only be removed if it is covered by your site risk assessment. The platform is now ready for use. The water storage tank sits in a steel frame with lifting points and fork pockets allowing it to be manoeuvred around site by a crane or forklift respectively. Fill the water tank before manoeuvring it into position. Manoeuvre the water storage tank into the washout area using the available lifting apparatus and position it behind the platform, next to the covered compartment of the filtration tray. Attach the hose from the filtration tray compartment to one of the connection couplings on the top of the storage tank. Feed the delivery hose through the eyelets on the hose delivery arm. Using two operatives, place the bottom of the hose delivery arm into the holder on the tank's frame. Secure with the M16 set screw and full nut. Adjust the height of the hose delivery arm accordingly and secure. Secure the end of the hose to the other connection coupling on top of the tank. Take the black 110 volt power cable for the pump in the filtration tray and plug it into the left hand socket on the side of the water storage tank frame. 
Then take the black 110 volt power cable from the pump for the water storage tank and plug it into the right hand socket on the side of the frame. Finally, take the main power cable, yellow, for the concrete washout system and plug it into the generator on site power source. Return to the power socket panel on the side of the water storage tank frame and turn the switch on to check the water flows from the delivery hose. Switch this off until you are ready to wash out as the water will flow continuously. The concrete washout system is now ready to use. Now the system is all set up and good to go, it's time to start using it. In this section we'll demonstrate how to use the concrete washout system, how the weir system works, and the necessary precautions sites must take to ensure site personnel are safe at all times during operation. Before attempting to clean any concrete equipment using the concrete washout system, the washing platform must have been configured to support the relevant size of skip. Follow the steps in our setup video to ensure the platform has been set up correctly. With the guidance of a banksman, lower the concrete column skip onto the washing platform, ensuring the mouth of the skip is facing towards the work platform. Position the skip on the platform's resting pads if using 500, 750 and 1000 litre concrete column skips, or rest the sides of the skip on the edges of the platform for 1500, 2000 and 3000 litre skips. Operatives should stand to the side of the skip washing platform and use tag lines to guide the skip and place it in position. Under no circumstances are operatives permitted to be on the work platform when a skip is mid-lift. Once the skip is landed, only then can an operative climb the ladder and enter the work platform. Once on the work platform, the operative should attach their harness to the harness point at the back of the work platform. The restraint bar can then be removed from the front of the work platform and slotted into the back of the platform underneath the harness point for easier access to the skip for cleaning, subject to a site-specific risk assessment. When washing a skip with a bail arm, ensure the bail arm has been lowered into the resting position before attempting to clean it. For skips without bail arms, Conquip recommend placing the chains out of the way during cleaning. To begin washing, turn the system on using the switch on the water storage tank frame. Once on, the water will flow continuously, so Conquip recommend an operative on ground level to control the water flow. Use the delivery hose to wash all concrete off the skip. As the skip is washed, a large heavy concrete aggregate will collect in the filtration bag in the filtration tray. The filtration bag will begin to fill up with large aggregate. When full, this bag can be lifted out of the tray and disposed of in line with the site's environmental regulations. In the filtration tray, the water flows over a weir into the second section of the tray. In the second section, any remaining sediment sinks to the bottom, while the water, free from particles, can flow through the filtration holes into the third and final section of the tray. As this section begins to fill up with water and it reaches the required level, the flotation switch on the pump will activate, automatically transferring water from the tray to the water storage tank. Once the water level drops to a sufficient level, the flotation switch on the pump automatically turns off, preventing unnecessary wear and tear on the pump. After all equipment has been washed, the system must be turned off using the switch on the side of the water storage tank frame. Conquip recommend the operative on ground level controls the water flow. To wash out the chute of a concrete truck, Conquip recommend arranging four filtration bags in the filtration tray to capture the maximum amount of concrete aggregate. Slowly reverse the truck, positioning the concrete chute over the filtration bags in the filtration tray. The driver can then clean the chute, as per their normal procedure, with the filtration tray collecting any excess concrete waste. Once clean, the driver can raise the chute into its transport position and leave site. After all equipment has been cleaned, the concrete waste and waste water needs to be disposed of according to local environmental guidelines. Remove the filtration bags and empty the concrete aggregate as per the site's environmental guidance. If the site has an arrangement with the concrete plant to reuse the waste water, it can be sent back to make the next batch of concrete. Alternatively, the water storage tank can be crane lifted onto a concrete slab for use in a wet curing process. When the water in the tank needs to be pumped into the concrete truck or elsewhere, place the delivery hose in position and turn on the switch on the water storage tank frame to start the flow of water. 
The pump in the tank pumps water at a rate of 225 litres a minute. If left on continuously, the water storage tank will empty until the flotation switch deactivates the pump. This will take approximately 9 minutes. Conquip offer a neutralising additive for contaminated water. Any remaining water in the filtration tray or the water storage tank must be treated before being disposed of in accordance with the site's environmental regulations.